So, where is Hefe in the world right now? Hefe is two glasses of vino. Adios. Two bottles of water. Adios. Lemon. Adios. Heading to Mushia on the ocean for calamari. Just a great day for a walk. I'm walking in a shady spot. May need to pull out the umbrella. I don't know yet. But um, maybe the next couple of kilometers there will be an albergue. But it's only like, what the hell time is it? So it is 3.20 early. Since Popeye has got his spinach, vino. And I'm not a big, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I haven't had a beer since I arrived in Europe. Oh, yeah, see, no? Yeah, the last one was in Newark, New Jersey at the bar because they cut the food off. Just said, no more food for you. <clears throat> and then to get on that plane to France. Boy, that international flight was terrible. I thought it was all over too, by the way. All over, because the first question they ask you is, where's your vaccination card? Where's your vaccination? Because in France they are looking for everyone to have the passport. So I showed them the forged one. See? I do not aspire to take that at all costs, so. Then they asked, I see, oh, okay, and just a picture of something to get into a candle box concert at some point. It was made, I won't say by who, but you know who you are. I used that. They said, have you had dose, doses? See? Oh, yeah, see? <laughs> oh, I love it. It is wonderful. I don't give a rip who makes it. I will wait. I'm an old man. I don't need a heart condition for the side effects. Far be it for me to complain. But it got me. That right there kind of fucked me through it because I was like, that's a domino killer there. No, I haven't left Lisbon yet to fly to New York. No, I'm flying back in New York. No, Boston, Boston. So... I got to have the lobster when I'm in Boston. And now you're in Bushi, you got to have the fish, the calamari, see. This is the walk that I'm walking. Cornfields, chateaus, two glasses of wine. You know, I don't know what these green things are, but I boiled them once in the middle of nowhere, I'll show you. See out there, those green things right up there. I don't know what these are. For some reason I thought they were leeks, but I don't think so. And they grow them all by themselves. Got those leaves. I had um, forced my kid out in this field to pick some potatoes in the middle of nowhere. Look at those corn. It's really a nice looking corn. So anyway, I, we picked some potatoes, boiled those. He got a half a turkey breast. Just a raw piece of turkey sitting in some I mean, less than adequate refrigeration for a long time. And then they're mustard over here. I bought a tube of it. It was in my backpack. It was way too heavy to carry. So I figure I'll do it when uh, I'm about to leave. Bueno. I'm going to get a couple things of mustard to throw in my backpack for the way home. Because this mustard is totally different. It, it is um, almost see-through. So it is, oh, it is yellow because it contains a mustard seed. But not like artificially all this stuff. So like Heinz or the mustard you get in the store it's, in the United States is absolutely terrible. 
I tried a little bit on some soup I made. It was just it made it awful. But here, you throw in, you squeeze in a container of that, some potatoes, some onions, a little bit of turkey, and you are like Chef Carl, whoever the hell that is. And the food is fantastic. So me and my kids, we cut up potatoes. And we cooked that in almost, I don't know, four or five albergues, even one here in Lucia. It was very good. They're like, oh my God, this is delicious. Ask my son Brandon about the famous long bowl incident. He long bowled it big time. We don't talk about that because he gets angry. So anyway, I'm walking to find a hostel. I've got to get under some, put my hat on or some sort of head gear because my head burns. But at three o'clock, it's a different kind of sun. The wine is green, so it's not the, the grapes are green, so they're not like picking, but the wine here is unbelievable. I mean, no matter what you try, it's good. And I'm not saying as far as the booze factor, just it tastes good. All right, so check out that tree. Looks like a monster in the woods coming to eat the children. I don't know if you can see that. That's a chateau down there, a whole bunch of buildings. So maybe that is where I end up tonight, I don't know. But so this walk is pretty much day by day. Today I think is the 10th or 11th. And I don't fly home till August 6th, so I have like 15 more days. So I'll get to Mushia. I'll, hopefully I can stay in the albergue that I stay in all the time while I'm there. I'll do some beach combing get up early the next day and then um, head to Fistera and then figure out a way to bypass Santiago to get toward Portugal. I'm looking at the map. I got this app called Buen Camino and it's pretty good. I was shocked this guy showed me it. Boy, that tree. I just I keep... At night it comes and eats your children. I don't know how it grows like that. It reached out a couple times to try to survive and it was shot down. So I have about 15, 20 more days. And so I will be heading down to Fatima via Porto and the last part is of Portuguese Camino. I've really targeted uh, these spots and I want to bring up a point before I forget. So I'm at this, I'm just walking by about maybe three kilometers back. And there's this place for sale. Right across the street, right on this path, the Camino, right? And all I keep thinking about, I don't know why, is um, my oldest, or my second youngest brother, Scott's kids, right? Now he's had, they've had some tragedy in their lives. If you want to know tragedy, these kids, oh my God, it doesn't seem to get much better, right? I don't know where Jeffrey is right now. I, he's disappeared. Last I heard, his mom couldn't find him. He's kind of dropped off the grid. His brother, Nick, great guy, just a genius for Christ's sake. The kid is like a very good man, right? Um, a bit misguided. But, you know, that's our youth in the United States. And all I keep thinking about is if Jeffrey and Nick, Nick and Jeffrey's place, there's a place right back here. I'll take a picture. I already did. And they sold these little peppers. You fry these little peppers. I'm coming up on those here. Those little peppers are not too hot. But they taste great. And Kylie will attest to these. And so will Brandon. I think Taylor's had them too. Yeah. Well, uh, those little peppers and calamari. Maybe cervezas. Maybe a vino. Just open up this. Close this place down. Clean it all up. Have like a, a little B&B &B out here. Now there's not a lot to do. You need a scooter. Probably. And a truck car to share but this would change their lives start living in a little bit 
kind of looking out the window with no internet type pattern. This is exactly what that family needs to kind of set straight and then have a little business. They come, they fry up some peppers. And this sounds straight crazy, but it, you have no idea how many people come here all year round. Just drop by, stop in, pick up a vino behind the bar, maybe get a glass of wine. Uh, I mean, a, a glass of beer. Everyone's hot when they walk this. Or cold and they need a rest stop. And then potentially a, an albergue. It's like 10, 15 euro to, to stand the night here. And then pilgrims move to the other towns. But I think it's the answer. Point Camino, another Jeffism that'll never come true. Here come some bikers.